Roderick David Stewart, born in January of 1945, is a British rock and pop singer and songwriter. Born and raised in London, he is of Scottish and English dis- ancestry. With his distinctive raspy singing voice, Stewart is among the best-selling music artists of all time, having m- sold more than 120 million records worldwide. He has had 10 number one albums and 31 top 10 singles in the UK, six of which reached number one. Stewart has had 16 top 10 singles in the US, with four reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. He was knighted in the 2016 Birthday Honors for Services to Music and Charity. Um, After Stewart had a handful more UK top 10 hits, The Faces broke up in 1975. Oh, he was part of a band, I suppose. Let me see. Let me go back up. Maybe I skipped a little bit too much. There we go. Um, Stewart's music career began in 1962 when he had taken up busking with a harmonica. In 1963, he joined the Dimensions as a harmonica player and a vocalist. In 1964, Stewart joined Long John Baldry with the All Stars and the Old Stars before moving uh, to the Jeff Beck group in 1967. Joining Faces in 1969, he also maintained a solo career, releasing his debut album that year. Stewart's early album were a fusion of rock, full music, Music, folk music and soul music and R&B. His third album, uh, Every Picture Tells a Story, was his breakthrough topping the charts in the UK, US, Canada, and Australia, as did its ballad, Maggie May. Oh, this is Maggie May guy. My dad told me about this song. His 1972 follow-up album, Never a Dull Moment, also reached number one in the UK and Australia. While going top three in the US and Canada... Its single "You Well Wear It Well" topped the chart in the UK and was a moderate hit elsewhere. Uh, let's continue down. After a disco and new wave period in the late 1970s and early 1980s, Stewart's music turned to a soft rock slash middle of the road style, with most of his albums reaching the top ten in the UK, Germany, and Sweden. But faring less well in the U.S., the single Rhythm of My Heart was a top five hit in the U.K., U.S., and other countries, with its source album 1991's Vagabond Heart becoming at number 10 in the U.S. and number two in the U.K., his highest charting album in a decade. In 1993, he collaborated with Brian Adams and Sting on the power ballad All for Love, which went to number one in many countries. In the early 2000s, he released a series of successful albums interpreting the Great American Songbook. In 2008, Billboard magazine ranked him the 17th most successful artist on the Billboard Hot 100 all-time top artists. A Grammy and Brit Award recipient, he was voted number 33 in Q magazine's list of the top 100 greatest singers of all time. As a solo artist, Stewart was inducted into the U.S. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the 1994, the U.K. Music Hall of Fame in 2006, and he was inducted a second time into the U.S. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2012 as a member of Faces. There we go. My goodness. So he's done a lot of stuff. Well, I'm very excited to see this. This is Rod Stewart. Do you think I'm sexy? Guys, let me know what you like and what you don't like. And Roy, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Everybody give a huge thank you to Roy and let us know if we need to know anything else. Let's do it. Here we go. Right, already a very groovy kind of a older type of video. Okay, I remember this voice. This voice is so beautiful. I have no idea how he produces this rasp so naturally and throughout his singing, but it's absolutely beautiful. And, oh, <laughs> okay. This is really funny, but I just remembered this song. Oh, I don't know if that's what, but I remember his voice on that. Is this that song? Cause I just literally listened to his voice and heard that same quality. And I was trying to remember like what it was from. And that's what I just got. Is that what it is? I feel like that's what it is. And that's really, really funny. Let's keep on listening. I think I might have just gotten that. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, I'm actually pretty impressed with myself that I figured that out from literally just hearing the rasp in his voice. Li okay, so I do know this song. I don't know where from. I think maybe TikTok. I've literally heard just that little section that we just listened to, but that's hilarious. I literally heard his rasp in that little verse right there and was like, wait, hold on. Where do I know that from? And that's literally, wow, that's really funny. Okay, I love that. That's really great. I've been figuring out songs through the weirdest ways these days. It's very, very strange. But anyway, um, let's keep on listening, shall we? <laughs> This is such a good song. It's so cool to see this in concert form. That's so cool. I'm just, I can't even believe that they put something out like this. I'm trying to think of if it came out today, like how that would kind of resonate with audiences. I mean, they did, they do have like similar things, but this is just so direct and funny. Like I feel, I don't know if people would laugh at it or if they would think that it's like, I don't know, legit or just like turn it into a dance song. I don't even know, but it's, I love it. It could be a, probably a confidence booster for people today. I like it a lot. That's probably why it's maybe trending right now. I think it's trending on TikTok from what I know, but like people were like doing like some kind of a dance to it. I like it. I think it's a really fun song and it's super direct, which makes it, I don't know, more fun to listen to because you're like, uh, okay, we're really saying this. Okay, we're saying this out loud. Okay, great. And watching it in this video format is also kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> Also, how does he go into that rasp so easily? Come on. It's almost like he's whispering while belting at the same time. Come on, baby, let me know. It's that kind of a thing. It's so interesting. I think he sounds like he's whispering and kind of like, car like he's doing that thing where I, you would call it being in the pocket in jazz, I would say, or like in a, in a more, well, I guess you could say it in disco. Disco is kind of like being in the pocket at all times. So he's being in the pocket with this whisper, which is keeping it like really groovy and keeping it feeling like it's moving forward. And then he's also emphasizing the way that he grows his vowels. So yeah, you think, oh, you know, like he just yeah, yeah, grows it and then throws it out, which is cool. That kind of is what I think is making it exciting. But it definitely sounds like a whisper saying. Just reach out and touch. Just reach out and touch me. So it's all in his like mixed voice and then falls back into this rasp. I don't know the lyrics. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. No. And then cuts off with that kind of in the pocket cut off. Oh, it's a UK, not a US release. Okay, good to know. having a good old time on stage.
really consistent too. I think this is more of like a recorded version. I'm kind of curious because I don't think they would do this back in that day when this was really. When was this released? Yeah, 1978. I'm not sure if they would do this, but there's something called. Oh my God, what is it called? Uh, I'm forgetting the recording studio term for this. We, we, oh my God. <laughs> what is it? Hold on. Any recording engineers in here that know when you put, when you cut a certain vocal out that you record and then you pop something else in. Oh my God. How am I forgetting what this is called right now? You insert, a th what? Hello, Maggie? What? Okay, I can't remember what that is called right now. Uh, what? Can I find it somewhere? Hold on. Uh, not lip sync. No, no, no. Hold on. Uh, inserting a vocal into a song uh, term. No, not a cappella. Backup vocals, no. Oh, cheese muffins, not a double track, no. It's when you literally, is it punching in? Is that what I'm trying to think over? Not overdub necessarily, not voiceover. Maybe it's like a, it's punching. I can't remember. I think it might be punching is the word, but I feel like that's still not right. Anyways, you can punch in and out essentially. I'm going to just call it that for now. But you can like punch in a certain clip and like you can repeat the chorus and use that chorus that you already recorded as the main chorus in the second chorus as well. Cheating. It's called cheating. Yes, exactly. Anyways, but what I'm saying is like a lot of artists will do that and then add like additional things in the chorus. In this case, it sounds like it's um, like the chorus that was recorded in the first half is being used in the second half here too because I don't hear any variety in the vocals and I'm hearing the exact same cutoffs and that could be like that could come sometimes with you know really great con continuous consistent practice but in this case I think it might be specifically you know them just uh, bringing back a, a, a chorus essentially from the beginning but like gosh what was that called why am I forgetting the term I literally talked about this with somebody, I mean, not recently, but still. Anyways, okay, let's just keep on going. I'm going to continue on, and and yeah. <laughs> Roscoe Godding, looping. No, it's not looping. Did you just say, oh, cheese muffins? Yes, Jason, I did. <laughs> I did. Not looping. It's a different term. It's where you like cut out a certain section of music. I mean, of, of your vocal that you just did. I mean, I know you can call it dubbing, but it's, it's a different term. I can't remember it. Mom, do you remember that term? We talked about it. Anyways, I, I'll figure it out later and then remember. But anyways, I, that's what it sounds like he's doing. It sounds like he's like repeating the chorus with the exact vocals that he already recorded. As in like he just took those vocals and moved them over to this side of the track as well. Let's continue on. And then this is a total change. This is like the, I guess you'd call it the play out. So he's doing the play out here, but it's so interesting. Like I can hear the vocal similarities between the two. That's why I'm thinking it's, it's saying that. Um, I was going to say sampling. No, not quite sampling. I mean, sampling is using other people's music or, or music that you've heard um, and using it as a sample in your own music. So there are plenty of samples, for example, on the new um, music technology, like the, the software that I use is Logic Pro. So you can find plenty of samples that you can loop, that you can use. They call them loops, actually, um, in Logic. But you can use samples to like change them, pitch them differently, change the rhythm, change the speed, all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Gosh, I can't remember. I wish I could remember that term. But anyway, it's all right. We get the idea. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, there we go. Actually, Lori got it. Punching is... Okay, I might have gotten it right. Punching in is a recording technique that lets you record new material within a previously recorded track instead of recording full takes of the song until you get it exactly right. Yep, okay, so it was punching. Okay, thank you, Laurie, for making me feel like I'm not crazy because I'm like, I know this term, but it's like, I haven't, I haven't used that term in a really long time. So yes, I'm referring to punching in. I feel like, well, in this case, he's not necessarily punching in. He's using his chorus. Well, that's what you can do. With the punching in, you can get the chorus exactly right and you can like, have it perfectly you know the way that you want it and then you take that punch in that you have that whole entire section you put it all together and then you move it into the next section as well so that you have that same chorus so that you don't have to re-sing it twice in the same way like I had to do that when I was recording on one of my my songs as well so um and it's not a like bad thing to do as long as you're adding to it and making it more interesting like I think they added a sax solo to the second one that I don't remember hearing in the first half but I could have just missed it but anyways, Lori, you get 10,000 points. Good job. Okay, see, oh no, I clicked on the YouTube thing. No, pause. Okay, see, so if you guys can hear the whisper at the end, it seems like in that part, he's taking out more of his voice, but he goes to the whisper. So that makes me think that I'm right about him using the whisper technique over his belt to create that kind of um, sound in his voice and then fall back into the, whatchamacallit, into the, um, hello, into the rasp. Oh my gosh, my, my brain is just not processing words today. Uh, Tyler says, we'll, we'll get it to tomorrow. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to get it today. Anyways, but yeah, seeing that whisper at the very end makes me think that that's, that is what he's kind of consistently using is that whisper technique to be able to fall back into the raspy sound in his voice and kind of just giving it that interesting quality while he maintains the energy for the disco kind of style. So it's really cool. I like this song so much. Let's finish it off. Oh, what a good song. Okay, this is really cool. I'm really excited to see what other stuff Rod Stewart has done. By the way, for those of you asking about my Maggie Mae reaction, I do remember I actually already posted it, so it is up on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. I posted it like almost a year ago. <laughs> not all, not exactly a year ago, but like at least almost a year ago. So it's been up for a really long time. So if you want to go and check it out, it is on my channel. You just have to type in Maggie Renee um, and then Maggie Mae, I guess. Reaction, that kind of thing. 